everybody, I'm Jerica and I'm Leah. Welcome to We'd Rather Be Reading. This week we read... We read. Yeah. We did. We got over the anatod hump of numbness from reading uh, and we moved on to the Grishaverse, which we're so obsessed with anyways. Uh, so it was an awesome week of reading. It was an awesome week of reading and we finished Rule of Wolves, mm. is what we did, and uh, yeah. That happened. It did. We finished it. It's done and done. Yeah. It says my first note here. Done and done. <laughs> oh, you have amazing notes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you have done and done. And then my next line is, I did not like this book as much as the first one. Okay. Yeah. But I did like it. I, I have to say, I did like it. But mm. I did not like it as much as King of Scars. And we did talk a yeah. little bit about that. Um, we agree. I like King of Scars because I think a little bit more was focused on Nikolai and he, as we've said a million times, one of my favorite characters. Though I do think he took a back seat pretty much the entire time during his own books, which yep. I'm a little disappointed about. I wish it was a little bit more him, a little bit more of his like witty personality, quips and stuff like that. And even though I predicted that this Rule of Wolves book was going to be about female power rising, yep. and I was like, Zoe's <laughs> going to be queen, I don't know, Nikolai has to die for that. And somehow Nina's going to pull off being some sort of queen. And you're like, no, no, that's your room is like a commander. And I'm like, I don't know how she's going to do it. But she did it in a she backwards way. Kind of and that is, we have, we have <laughs> concerns. We have a lot to talk about. I am about concerned. Very concerned. <laughs> but we're going to get to that. Uh, I agree with you that Nikolai did not get as much of a front seat part of his own freaking books. I like, know. It was too many side characters that I did not care about. Like, I'm sorry, Mayu and Ari. I'm no. sure you're important in some yeah. way, but I don't care about you. No. Like, at all. Boring. So boring. Uh, and Darkling also could have very much not been a part of this book. Oh, he for... did not have to. I mean, I like that he got an ending where we now know where he is and it's just kind of done, but I was happy with him just kind of being dead after the last one. Like, that would have been Being fine. set in a pyre on fire. I was done yeah. with that. I thought that that was the end. Yeah. Um, and also, I wanted more from the love story. I yeah. found that it wasn't... <laughs> I mean, I found that there was times where they you could see the love building between them, but it wasn't clear enough. And there was too much time spent on other people mm -hmm. that you lost kind of like the anticipation part of the love. It was... And that the book was even about Nikolai. <laughs> yeah, because it was like... I wasn't invested enough in them because there was not enough time of them just hanging out and talking to each other. Mm. No, exactly. It was, it was like, I mean, she's the commander, right? So it was always war talk or I'm prickly and him being like, I like your shards or whatever. Yeah. And she's like, I'm too snappy for you. And he was like, I like your yeah. ice. <laughs> that was yeah. their like love conversation. I mean, it was. And I would have liked to see more. I would have liked to see more of him actually breaking through her shell and, and her actually showing that she cares about him. Like more of these things. Like I loved the, when he actually says he loves her on the on the flying ship there yeah. and Nikita them. Like and, that was... And what, she, what did she say? I actually quoted She's... this. <laughs> I don't know. I don't oh, know no. That's what he... When he says he loves her. Yeah. But at the end... When she finally, after she becomes queen and all the stuff, which we'll talk about to completely spoil the book for you guys. Um, Haven't we already? <laughs> okay, we already <laughs> spoiled it. But uh, at the very end, uh, when she becomes queen and all of that stuff, and of course Nikolai is still with her in some way, and she says, I love you. And he says, all saints, say it again. Yeah. <laughs> she, and she says, I will not. <laughs> I am the queen. I must do nothing but please myself. Yeah, boy, oh, I did like that. I, I did <laughs> like that. That was that so was romantic. So good. I can't believe the romance, like, dripping off of this Zoya character. No, I'm, I still am not, like, of course I root for Zoya and Nikolai, but Zoya is not one of my top characters of the book because of her, like, sharpness and because, like, there's not so much depth there. But now there's going to be. Also, she's a dragon, which is badass. But we talk about these characters as if we know them. Because we have read very many books that include yeah. them in it. Which is the Shadow and Bone series and the Six of Crow series. Yeah. And then now the this King of Scars Rule of Wolves duology. Which very much sets up another Six of Crows book. That's it. End. It like, says fully. And you know what made me so happy about that? Is that she tells Sturholm, Sturmholm, Stormholm, Stormhond? Yeah, <laughs> I never get that name right. Actually, Nikolai's uh, alter ego, his privateer, his privateer alter ego, no pirate, privateer. 
Yeah. <laughs> Privateer alter ego. That uh, she has a task for him. Zoe has a task for him as queen. And he has to go and fetch Kaz Brecker. Uh, and bring him to her because she has a job for him. And then I was like, finally, we're going to get the Nikolai that I love back in the next book. Hopefully it will be a little bit more about him because he has to fetch Kaz. That would be nice. And and I like that I, I did highlight this part, like Brecker, which is Cass, Brecker would probably make an excellent security consultant if Nikolai didn't think he would steal the golden domes right off the little palace roof. <laughs> and, but I also have in my notes that I... I find that Cass was not his regular self. Like no. I missed Cass from from um, from Six of Crows and, and Crooked Kingdom. Like I feel like he was too rushed to be written the way it was. Like it was trying to be Cass, but it wasn't really pulling it off, kind of thing. In a way, mm-hmm. I felt it was just something was off feeling. too. But anyways, did you do anything else than read, or did you? <laughs> oh, you anything? know it. You, you know. know. You know it. I got. And do you know what I realized too? What we forgot to judge the cover last week. Oh. That's interesting. But it's the same cover as the first one, just no, in a different color. A, no, it's it got a has wolves tree. on it. No, it has the ash. It has the ash tree. The ash tree. Hmm. Whoops. Whoopsie. <laughs> it was about a tree. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> that was true. That was true. Yes. Um, so what did I, what else have I been up to reading? Oh, yeah. I got sucked into an Amelia Hutchins vortex, mm-hmm. and I haven't been let out of it even yet. So there's a new se- oh, If you guys have listened to this before, I have read a gazillion of her books. I call them the Bad Bad Fake Chronicles because I would never let Leah read them. I'm a virgin still on this one. She will just rip them apart with the continuity issues, (laughs) with all of the spelling mistakes. Could I say I found a continuity thing in uh, in Rule of Wolves? You did, but you didn't tell me what it was. You said something. It is here. It was the spelling or wrong word. Tell me about it. Fjerda's crown prince had sanctioned the covert operation and he was in attendance at the wedding too. It's not a wedding, it's the coronation he's had attendance to, but it says wedding here. And I was like, is she marrying Nicola? Is this happening? Is this wedding here? Going back? No, it's coronation going forward. Still no freaking wedding. Okay. Wedding. Wedding. Okay. Someone missed That's the word. That's actually a big one. Mm-hmm. That is a real big one. Made me think that they were getting married. I was listen, very if any publishing house is listening to this or agent, hire Leah immediately to go through all the continuity issues of all of the books in all of I the world. I found spelling errors too. <laughs> Which is why you can never read Amelia Hutchins' work. Because she actually has a quote at the beginning of it that's set, like a warning that says, listen, this was edited by two people who are human beings and we make human mistakes and do with it. And I I'm don't like, believe in this. I believe in it. I, 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 I don't believe in this. Okay. I, everyone knows that there should be at least four eyes on a new book before you let it go. Never. And it cannot be the same person that, that reads and re-edits. Like, because you don't see your own mistakes. Like, once you, you need to put it away for a long while before you need fresh eyes on I this. I could definitely yeah. enjoy the story with a few spelling mistakes. And continuity issues. It doesn't I mean, bother I me not, as much as it bothers you. I should not pick on the spelling mistakes because I'm the queen of freaking <laughs> not being able to spell stuff. It is embarrassing. But you don't have your own editor. But I got such I need in, one. Yeah. I need an editor too. So publishing houses, yeah. I, uh, I would love to work with continuity shit, but please give me an editor. Mm. There you go. Sold. <laughs> <laughs> um... Uh, so during this Amelia has Hutchins' Vortex, uh, I read another, not the Fate Chronicles, another different series. There's four books. The fourth one isn't out yet, but each book grows longer, so the third book's actually a thousand pages. This is a Harry Potter syndrome. <laughs> yeah. Where the first one's like that, and the seventh book is like seven times as long. <laughs> but anyways, I love it so much. But I wanted to say in, in our podcast of a little bit of the dedication that I sent to you. Because yeah. I have never read a dedication that was so personally vindictive in my life. <laughs> so if, this is a page and a half of a dedication, and I'm just going to read a tiny bit of it so you get like a taste of how this writer uh, writes and how this writer thinks and And how this like, writer hates people she used to work with. <laughs> so this says, this one is for my ex-co-workers in the medical field who talk shit about me and chose to be catty bitches. Look how far that got you. <laughs> Thanks for the lies backstabbing, tossing lads in the trash and then finding them by a miracle. And even though I'd seen your pretty shit coming, then printed them. Seriously, people's lives depended on those labs, which makes you a huge asshole. Because I knew you were that ugly inside. 
skip forward to the next page. <laughs> so, in like the words of Arya Hecate, which is the character of the book, go unfuck yourself. <laughs> XOXO, Amelia Hutchins, that one bitch you fucked over and life made lemonade and added vodka to those lemons you tried to ham me. Boom. <laughs> so honest. The honesty is... <laughs> I wish I could be that honest sometimes. <laughs> if you can just picture that person writing this book and you accept all of that, like, awesome, clear bitchiness, but, like, powerful word, you know her characters are going to be the same. They're going to be super powerful. Don't take no shit from no one. They're going to fight with each other the whole time. They're going to love each other like cats and fucking dogs and monsters and dragons and shit like that. And that's really what her books are about and why I like them so much. And that's the end of my love story. All right. <laughs> and I'm still an Amelia Hutchins virgin. So I will you need to stay, that, stay way. that way for a little bit longer, I think. <laughs> I might fall down the rabbit hole otherwise. And then I'm just going to be rage reading these books. And that's just not going to be good for anyone, I think. <laughs> Anyways, but what I've been read? doing, hmm. I've been reading um, the Cassandra Clare. I read Chain of Gold last week, and this week I'm on the second one, like Chain of Iron, I think it's called. Hmm. And I really like these books. I, I have no complaints. Honestly, I think her stories are really well written, and and they're just, they're just good stories. Uh, they really suck me in. And it was at one point, there's a bachelor party with a reverse mermaid, which made my day. Can you explain what a reverse mermaid is for? Yeah, it apparently needs explaining because this is also <laughs> booked by accident, apparently. He has human legs and the fish upper body. <laughs> which, when I explained this to my husband, he said, could be better. Which I'm not sure. <laughs> What to think about that? Uh, human legs and a fish upper body. <laughs> I guess he was getting at the below the waist yeah. parts, like the fun bit. Without the talking. Yeah. Just the vagina. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, All right. I guess. Uh, who knows? Primal. I, I, I decided not to, to uh, you know, dive any deeper into that comment. Uh, just kind of let it go and move on. I'm laughing so much. No one would also appreciate it. My husband would also be like, oh, please, can you put an entire fish suit on this woman today? Just on the top? Just on the top. That would be I look at her shapely legs. <laughs> Anyways, I really like these books. Uh, I have no complaints. And then I've also started reading a bit on the, the next book for this uh, podcast, but we're going to finish talking about Rule of Wolves first. And there's actually a twist quite late in this book. So if you haven't read these, massive freaking spoiler. And I kid you not, I did an exclamation so loud of, what Whoa. the fuck? That both my husband and my son came running into the room thinking I had hurt myself. <laughs> Did mom fall and off the I chair? was laughing on the couch. And they were like, what the frick is going on? And I was like, this twist. And they're like, you made us get up for this? And I'm like, no one told you for to your <laughs> <laughs> I was just going, what the fuck? Yeah. Anyways, regardless, uh, there's a twist. So if you don't want spoilers now, fingers in yours. La, 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 la. <laughs> Honey, is this not, none of us could have seen coming. No, Hanne kills Rasmus, the yeah. crown prince of Fjerda. But first, like we have to say, Hanne and Nina are friends. Hanne is the daughter of Jarl Brum, mm -hmm. which is the Druskela leader who Matthias let live because he thought that there would be compassion coming from one of the Druskela that could then live happier lives in the future. Okay, go. All right, and Nina is obviously Nina Zenik, who's uh, the heart render who can control dead people now because she took care of Potter. And, and Matthias and, is and dead. Jordan. And, and she becomes Hane best friends with Hane Hane. and Nina are best friends. But there's a love story brewing here. You can tell that Hannah is or uh, Nina is falling in love with Hannah. And then there's some it's hints. It's like a friend way. No, there's hints to her. She says when she has to dress up as a soldier earlier mm. on in the book, she says it's the only time that she's ever felt like her real self and she got to be a man. That's uh, Hannah, not Yeah, Nina. Hannah. And mm. then it's uh, it's all of these things about how she doesn't want to marry and there's no man they can live up. Like there's hints about it. Anyways. There's a love story brewing there, if you didn't see that coming. I saw it coming, but if you didn't see it coming, it's fairly subtle. So, um, anyways, and the crown prince of Yara, Rasmus, he's been sickly, sickly, and Hane is a heart render. Mm. Or she's a healer. Mm. So she heals him, 
And then whenever they do something that Nina doesn't like, she makes him sick again and then talks to the queen about how it's their god, Diel, that's uh, punishing him. <laughs> Which is hilarious. I found this to be an excellent way of, of exerting <laughs> control. But anyways, they're on this massive battle boat station ship. I'm not sure what the frick that was. I could not picture it in my head. But it's got towers anyways. And at one point, uh, Rasmus brings Hanne with him up in this tower and then... He starts slapping her around, we find this out later, mm. and she kills him and throws him out the freaking window yep. after changing him to look like her, her and switching their clothes and changing herself to look like him. So she takes his identity. So she identity. steals his identity and she just sends him out. And I have this. This was where I was going, oh, what the? Yeah. And I was fine with that, but then I started thinking about it. And I'm like, all right, we've been through people being tailored in the past mm. in these books. And we know that it takes time and it's usually done gradually over a few days, At usually. Yeah. This is what they keep talking about. This was done under pressure in like a, what, 10, max 20 minute window, something like that. And she tailors not just herself, but him too. And then I was like, okay, did she tailor all of him? Or is it when they pull the dress off to do the autopsy or whatever they do or before they bury him, her, her? Mm. Will they figure out he's got a penis and it's a boy's body under there? Or what's going to happen here? Did she... I guess she didn't have to tell her herself. She says she bound herself. But with him, because him, he's now her and he's now dead. So it's going to be a funeral of some kind. I'm guessing they're going to want to clean up and like, put in nice funeral clothes. Or mm. they, It's not like they're going to take Hannah's body and just... Or Rasmus... Uh, tailored to look like Hannah. This is getting confusing. Yeah. Tailored to look like Hannah and just like throw them overboard. Like, I don't I'm think gonna that's guess, how Sarah's doing it. I'm going to guess that they, she tailored them both completely, uh, top to bottom. But then when she said that she strapped her like chest in, confused yeah. me. Because yeah. why would you need to if you were tailored? But I'm guessing she didn't have to tailor herself because she... Does she want to be a boy? Does she want to have a penis? Like, I'm not sure about this. This is not, this has not been clearly enough explained to me. I need to know specifics here. When she was like, I feel the most comfortable I've ever felt being in this body, even though Rasmus is a dick. Yeah. <laughs> but and this then, was her, like, true self. I just figured, okay, so Hannah is transgender. She is, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And, and I mean, it's a great way of, of, you know, being able to tailor yourself to look like a man and actually taking over someone's identity, which I'm sure is going to fool quite a lot of people because Rasmus has been very sickly and not been out of society a lot. Mm-hmm. But she, how does he going to go about fooling his family? I mean, I feel like he's been sickly a lot. Like his mother probably spent a lot of time with him. There's going to be lots of things. And Nina said too, like, and like you I didn't have... do it all, like, all the way right. Like, I could tell your eyes. I could, like, yeah, and there's sense some some... freckles by the yeah. ear and, yeah. and all sorts of stuff. Like, I mean, it was done in a rush. But I just feel like there's going to be times where Nina won't be there next to Hannah in Rasmus' body. And the mom's going to be there and they're going to talk about stuff. And, he, and, and he's going to be different because he's a different actual person. Yeah. There's going to be suspicion there. They'll just murder them all. <laughs> yeah. But so, in my, uh, uh, yeah, guess that the women were going to rise, Nina did find a back way to actually rise and, and run Fjerda in some way, because now she is in love with Hanne, and Hanne is now the crown prince. And Hanne is now the crown prince. So <laughs> Nina's got a way into the throne. Yep, she's going to be queen. I had a problem with, first of all, as you guys know, I love Matthias so much, and I was super sad that he died, and when Leah said, maybe that there's going to be a twist that he comes back, I was like, please, 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 but he did not. And instead, Nina falls in love with a girl who is transgender boy, which I'm super on board with, but when she's like, okay, now I'm Rasmus, and now I'm going to take you as my princess, Nina was like, I have waited forever for this, my love. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Matthias is your love. How did she get over this so fast? And I was messaging you, like, all of her quotes, like, my love, the love of my life. What are you talking about? Like, that went so fast from Matthias to Hannah, or sorry, Hannah Rasmus. It was just a quick transition for me. It is. And then it's also, the more you think about this... Nina is tailored, so she looks nothing like herself. And now Hanne is tailored, so she looks nothing like herself. So you basically have two fakes in love with each other. Like, you got a house, got to be love from, um, for what's on the inside at this yeah, point. Like, that is love from the inside, for sure. 
Anyways. And then Zoya rises. I wasn't sure how Zoya was going to rise to be a queen because she has no, like, blood stake in it. And, of course, the Darkling has been running around doing the same shit he did before. And he makes Nina and Jenya and everyone feel incredibly awful and uncomfortable and remember all of that, like, shitty war stuff. Yeah. So I thought, okay, now there's, like, this guy who wants to take over Nikolai uh, as the rightful heir. The little lands of, yeah. Uh, but at the end, they bring everyone together, all the lords, everybody comes together, and Nikolai makes a really big speech and says, why doesn't Zoya become queen? Exactly. Because I am not uh, the legitimate heir. I am a bastard son, privateer, blah, blah, blah. Why doesn't Zoya become queen? And then she's like, I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> yeah, but she doesn't want it, for sure. But, I mean, I think she's been acting very queenly the whole time. Yeah. And in a way, it makes sense. Like... The lands of line, like they talk about it, how there's been good lands of queen, okay, like rulers and bad ones, and and they were put there to together with the saints, or something to that effect. Memory's failing me. But now they're calling Zoya Zoya a saint, and he, I loved but what I he guess... said. Why wouldn't you want your queen to be a, a commander queen? Yes, yeah. like a soldier queen. And why wouldn't you want your queen to be a Grisha queen? Which and makes a sense dragon Ravka, queen because Ravka and a is saint like, queen. Ravka is like the only country that's really embraced the Grisha, so it would make a lot of sense to have a Grisha queen. Now, I think <laughs> Zoya is queen, and, and especially if she actually ends up marrying Nikolai to have like his diplomatic skills and his mm-hmm. knowledge of how to run a country would be good. Yeah, I it's, think uh, this is gonna be makes good, sense. It's going to be a good... Uh, Good, 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 good. <laughs> See, can't speak anymore. Thank you for that review. <laughs> you are very welcome. It was It'll my be good, best, good. best one Goodest, so far. Greatest, good, 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 good. Yeah. <laughs> so we love these books. Read them. They're by Lee Bardugo. Uh, if you haven't read Shadow and Bone or Six Crows yet, read those first in line before Rule of Rules. And power through Shadow and Bone if you don't. And know <laughs> that Six of Crows is coming. <laughs> We can't wait for the next Six of Crows book. Uh, thank you, Lee Bardugo, for these amazing characters that we consider friends. Now, on to our next book for next week. Which is Sky in the Deep by Adrian Young. And we've told you all how much we love Fable and Namesake. Like, yeah. Love, love, love. Love. Love, love them. This so I put all of their covers together the other day on Twitter. And I didn't realize that when you put them together, it creates one face. It's been all over Instagram. Okay. All over Instagram. It's gorgeous. It is. It's so beautiful. And but it's there's Fable. one cover of Fable where her hair is super, super, super red. Yeah. But they always talk about it being like this auburny red thing. So I like the other covers more than that like super mm-hmm. bright red version yeah. of Fable. But gorgeous covers, amazing books, which is why we wanted to read uh, the first series, or maybe not the first, but an, an, an earlier, earlier series, series. Uh, written by Adrian Young. So we've decided to read Sky in the Deep. And we're going to start now before we forget to judge this book by its cover. Mm. Because imagine if we forgot again, that would be embarrassing. And this is a good one. So the cover is uh, very dark and it's got a girl looking towards us with her axe. You see half of her face and Mm -hmm. she's got green eyes and and braids. And she's got an axe that has some sort of pagan symbol etched into it. And I mean, clearly this is going to be about... uh, warrior girl of some kind um i'm again viking looks or medieval time looks from her here but it's gonna be a female warrior empowerment i feel it coming yeah yes exactly. this is exactly what it looks like so i did maybe murder here potentially mm. so i i read the first three chapters <clears throat> and we are getting viking warriors here and mm. our main girl is elin and she's on the battlefield. It starts off with her on the battlefield with her clan, which are called the Aska. And her father is there and her best friend, Mira. Hmm? Uh, and Mira is also a fighting partner. So, And they've earned their, their place on the first line uh, of, of going into these battles. But then as they get into the, the fight, she gets separated from her friends. And uh, Ariki, which is the enemy clan that they're fighting, warrior is about to kill her. And before he does, another man steps in and stops him. And Elin recognizes him as her brother, lost Eerie. brother Eerie, who's dead. Yeah. Uh, and uh, she's like, Eerie, what's going on? He takes her hand in his, uh, her face in his hands and tells her to run. 
And then it just disappears in the fog with this other Riki warrior. She goes to her so dad. So she goes to her dad. Like, she screams out for her father and she's like, I saw Eerie, he was here. And her father thinks it's an apparition that it's their god that sent Eerie to protect her and keep her from being killed. The logical, I would, I would jump to that. I mean, back in pagan like, times, for sure. For sure. Even now, I mean, if I'm in the middle of a battle and someone I thought was dead and had been dead for five years shows up, you're gonna be like, I'm probably gonna be like, yeah, that's a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, Elin's not sure because Eerie does not look the same as he did when he died. Like he looks older, and he felt real. Like he feels like he's he's the same, but he's actually older. Uh, and in this first three chapters, we also learn that when they die in battle, they just leave the bodies on the battlefield, which I was like, <laughs> wow, this is going to make for a really weird battlefield. Like, it's just going to be this, this dead bodies, like, strewn yeah. around, like, no one taking care of them. Through. It's going to be s- the smell. And I don't know. Dicky. Yeah. Uh, anyways, so <laughs> Elin is taken by her father back to their, the, their um, spiritual leader person yep. man uh to do a sacrifice to their god um uh to, to say thank you for sending her brother to protect her in Varo, basically and they choose a goat and they kill it mm-hmm. that's the first three chapters so yep. i'm like all right huh. how to predict this one <laughs> so what will happen i'm like eerie is not that that but that i'm sure Mm. And there's got to be more to these Riki. And there's another clan as well that comes and fights. They ask, they talk about them briefly. They yada da, yada um, And uh, I'm thinking that the Aska maybe are... Because it seems to be like a continuous, like they come on specific time. I'm like, maybe they're just really sheltered and these other clans are just messing with them just to keep them like <laughs> stupid and yeah, I don't know, yeah, like yeah. backwaters. Um, not sure. Um, I'm sure there will be love at some point in this story, but I really don't know how. Do you know what I thought? Like, straight up in the beginning, the yeah. two girls are like, we know everything about each other. I know all her scars. I mm-hmm. I know how she bled, and I know how she healed. And I was like, oh, this is a love story between two girls. Potentially. Uh, and then I believe... So I predict that Elin will leave her clan to go and find Eerie. Um, mm-hmm. And that he will be her guide into this world as outside of this sheltered uh, little um, area where she lives with Asuka and the life that she knows. And then I'm thinking that the love may be Mira being in love with Eerie. Oh. That was that was my prediction for this. So what did you get? I predicted that Mira and, and Elin will be lovers. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. And that they were going to escape to go and try to find the brother Eerie. And that they were going to either try to take over the current clan or make a new uh, clan together. Fair enough. Because that's All like right. Viking styles. Yeah. You know, conquer, pillage, togetherness. Mm-hmm. We'll see, I guess. We will see. Follow it so along. excited. <laughs> Adrian Young, Sky in the Deep. You could listen to it or read it. Yep. And let um, us know I what you think. I did read the first. I've read the first three mm-hmm. chapters. I'm listening to the book. Yeah. I think I may listen to the rest of it. But we'll see. I was put in book jail again. Oh, Leah and her book jail. I am so sorry that Scribe puts you in book jail. And Scribe, Scribe lets me have all of the books. And you're Maybe like, it's because you, you only listen to Amelia Hutchins. <laughs> and she has no limits on how many books you can listen to. I'm sure it's something to do with her publishing out. But I get put in book jail all of the time. To the point where I now have a second audio ebook source. Okay. In Storytel. Yeah, but yeah. that's... Uh, I don't, I'm not in love with Storytel. It's too expensive. Scribd is much better. It is much better. So and, much better. And it doesn't put me in book jail. But, but it puts me in book Leah jail. Leah is free from book jail. So if I you guys have released. any tips on other books Leah should read that's inscribed, she's free from book jail. Let her or know. Or On this Twitter one, or I'm Instagram. <laughs> yes, send me your send me your book advice, like books to read. I need yeah. something that's not Amelia Hutchinson. <laughs> Hutchins. <laughs> uh, I need... How it blasphemy. <laughs> I like romantic <laughs> stories. I mean, these are with, romantic, consensual, love. with consensual coming together and preferably no fucking soulmates. Please spare me all Good of Lord. the fucking. Soulmates. I love, I love mates so much. Did you see that meme I sent you with the the super buff yes, person? And he's like, "How did you get so fit?" I did one push-up every time Sarah J. Moss <laughs> mentioned the word mate. mate. <laughs> and that's amazing. And there's like super, super <laughs> like, 
This is so true. It would happen like that. Too. It's my favorite. <laughs> you should do that. One push up, see what happens. I will. I will start from today. You will reread the books and do a push up every <laughs> time someone says made. Done. I will tell my husband that's what's happening this weekend. I'm rereading Sarah J. Mass's book and doing push ups. It'd be oh, like, uh, right. mm, We'll give, Confused. You, we'll give you updates on how this is going next time, if you remember. All right. Well, have a great week of reading uh, these books. I'm really looking forward to finding out what's happening in this book because it was hard to predict after those first three chapters, I think, mm-hmm. just because it was so short mm-hmm. that we really haven't gotten into the story fully yet. So but follow along with us, and we will see. talk to you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. We'd Rather Be Reading is an original podcast by Jerrica Ceron and Leah Sanfer. The music for The Penguins, written and performed by David Allred from the album The Transition, courtesy of Erase Tapes. Please check him out on Spotify and check us out on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram at We'd Rather Be Reading and on Twitter at We'd Rather Read. You can also email us at We'd Rather Be Reading the Pod at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.